We have continued to soar here at Justice League Headquarters. Stay tuned for all of the glorious details. Our special schedule is as follows. On day one, we have library, day two, music, day three, PE, and day four, art. For the specific days when we have each of the specials, be sure to refer to the small version of the newsletter. When William learns that his favorite caretaker, Mrs. Phillips, is leaving, he is devastated, but then she gives him a parting gift, a mysterious model castle that has been in her family for years. The castle is perfect in every way. It has a drawbridge, a moat, and a finger-high knight to guard the gates. It's almost too real. Sure enough, when William picks up the tiny silver knight, Sir Simon comes alive in his hand and tells William a mighty story of wild sorcery, wizards, and a kingdom in need of saving. Hoping the castle's magic holds the key to getting his friend to stay, William embarks on a fantastic quest to another land and another time, where a fiery dragon and an evil wizard are waiting to do battle. Our current read aloud is The Castle in the Attic by Elizabeth Winthrop. Remember, you can participate in these adventures as well by going to the links in the small version of the newsletter. Also, we continue to be mesmerized by Literacy Corner on the big screen each day. Those links, too, are accessible in the small version of the newsletter. We have been soaring through this week's academic accomplishments. Remember, you can access the specific links that your child is using in class each day by going to the small version of the newsletter. In math, we focused on multiplication of a whole number by a fraction. Students then solved problems with Elizabeth Cady Stanton versus Susan B. Anthony, who will win, and area and mixed numbers in Alaska and Hawaii, and each student settled in for Justice League math number 18. In science, we focused on flower reproduction. Students had the opportunity to dissect a flower, we also learned about urban farming, hydroponics in the city, flowers to seeds, and then we began moving through the digestive system. In writing, we've been continuing our research reports, writing in a compelling way. We've also looked at primary source documents, and we've been working on organizing information for drafting. With regard to phonics and spelling, we are on Unit 24, Schwa and Stress, in reading, we've been comparing and contrasting settings and events and describing settings and events and stories. We've also been analyzing accounts of the same topic while also finding information from multiple sources and comparing patterns of events and stories. In social studies, we're learning about the industrial growth era of American history. We've learned about Jack Johnson, Unforgivable Blackness, PBS. We've also learned about Jack Johnson compared to Booker T. Washington. We looked at a brief biography about Elizabeth Cady Stanton. We used a guide to the past featuring William Seward and Queen Lilla Polani. We also learned all about how the Panama Canal was built. Students used close reading strategies to zap the mosquitoes. We delved into the Spanish-American War and we took an excursion into the past looking at the causes of the Spanish-American War. It's time to revisit the concept of visible learning. This way you can help your child become better at identifying what he or she needs to work on with regard to his or her education. First of all, visible learning is based on research by Professor John Hattie. He has gathered together evidence about what really makes a difference to how children learn. 
Now, visible learners know what they need to do to improve their writing, math, reading, etc., are motivated to want to improve their skills, take responsibility for aspects of their learning, they seek and act on feedback on their learning, visible learners are resilient, they don't give up when it gets difficult, visible learners understand that learning is a lifelong journey. Now, as your child's parent, here's what you need to praise. Progress. You might say something like, you didn't know those times tables last month, now you do. Effort. You kept trying with that and you can do it now. Asking for feedback and acting on it. How can I improve this drawing? Asking questions, showing curiosity. What was the best question you asked today? And what not to praise. Just knowing the answers to easy questions and doing better than their friends. Here comes an article, Have a Conversation. I'm sure you have lots of conversations with your child. Here are some suggestions for how to go even deeper with those conversations. Parents have a lot on their mind all the time. Children do not come with a handbook and parents find themselves learning new things every day. While concentrating on your child's health and well-being, you may forget to provide some practical learning when it comes to everyday living, such as the art of conversation. Children do learn a lot from their parents and siblings when they are young. You are a big influence on your child's life and you have the means to teach her good conversational skills at an early age. Suggestions. Spend time with your child as much as possible. Don't just allow him to passively sit in front of the TV all day. Speak about your day with him and ask about his day as well. Role play with your child. Tell her you are going to start a conversation and that she must respond appropriately. Take turns greeting each other and asking questions. Point out ways she can improve. Make sure she knows how to maintain eye contact when speaking with someone. Introduce your child into different settings in which he can use conversational skills. For instance, ask him to answer the phone and point out ways he can improve the next time he has the opportunity to use the phone. Model proper conversational behavior around your child. Allow her to observe you having a conversation with someone and be aware of how you sound. Ask your child if she has any questions about the conversation afterwards. And play games around the dinner table that encourage conversation. You can do things like ask your child his favorite part of the day, prompt him to go into detail about it, and then tell him about parts of your day that he might find interesting. Conferences are coming the week of March 7th, and if you haven't claimed your time, the schedule can be found in the small version of the newsletter. Remember, sign up for a time when your child can be a part of this conference. I look forward to meeting with you and your child the week of March 7th. As your child continues to toil on homework each week, remember, I am in the adventure with you. I am the homework hotline, 816 816- 415-0368. You can be in the adventure with us by going to our Twitter site. The link can be found in the small version of the newsletter. And next week, it's Battle Cry. It's issue number 25 of Mr. McCoy's weekly log. It will come your way for the week ending Friday, February 25th, 2022. Be sure to tune in this video version, as well as the small version of Mr. McCoy's weekly log.